Yeah, I'm excited about the Lord this morning. We've been on this series, The Seven Spirits of God, and we are going to wrap it up this morning, uh, I think, unless God gives me a, a message to tie it all together next week. But at this moment, uh, we, on, we have done, somebody name off the seven spirits of God that we've already done. No, we haven't done that one yet. That's this morning, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Okay, what is the seven spirits of God? Go. The spirit of the Lord. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit of wisdom. One more. The spirit of might. And that's not might he do it. That's power and might. Amen. And today we are on the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And let's go with me to Psalms 34 and chapter 11. Psalms 34 and 11. It's good to be in the house of God this morning. Glad each and every one of you are here. Looking forward to a good morning of worship with you. I have... Um, uh, got some things on my heart that I'm burdened about that I believe next year is going to be the key to our services next year. And uh, let's just see what God does. The scripture says, Come ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. You don't have to turn there, but just follow with me. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. I ask you to move in this place, help each and every one of us, stir our hearts in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. Revelation 4 and 5. Our opening verse is on this. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. All right. So today we're going to be speaking on the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now I want you to ask yourself a question as we get started this. Why in the name of Sam Hill does God need to have the fear of the Lord? That's, I, I, that, that's, that's one of them questions that make you go scratch your noggin a little bit. Don't reach over and scratch somebody else. It's just stay with yourself. But, you know, it, it's, why does God need to have the fear of God? Glad you asked. We're going to get to that this morning. But let that question permeate in your mind throughout this lesson this morning that God, the seven spirits of God, one of the spirits is the fear of the Lord. The seven spirits, again, being the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. All right, let's go with it. The word fear in the Old Testament is to morally revere or cause to frighten. Fearing, reverent, and reverence. That's what it means. Let's look at the dictionary. Uh, this come from, I believe, dictionary.com. So I don't care if you, I don't know if you believe everything you read on the internet or not, but anyway, this is what it says. A noun. Reverential awe. Reverential awe. God has a reverence and he is full of awe in his fear that he has of the Lord. God does. Well, that's making you want to scratch your noggin a little harder, ain't it? Because, wait a minute. Why would God have reverence for the Spirit of the Lord? Okay, well, let's go on. A verb, simply saying, is an action of that. Reverential all, it's exactly the same. 
So whether it's by action or by proper noun, it means exactly the same. It is tied together. We're not talking about the fear of the Lord like you fear monsters under your bed and you're screaming and crying like a little sissy girl and tears are dripping down on your pillow until your mommy and daddy come turn the light on and show you it's just your raggedy Ann doll laying on the floor talking to you with its eyes going round and round. God doesn't have that kind of fear and God doesn't want you to have that kind of fear. The Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a sound mind. Hello? I'm going to tell you what most people have a problem with fear. False evidence appearing real. Amen. I mean, I, I, I pick at these young kids around here, and I act like I'm scared. They walk up to me, and I shake their hand, and they ball up their fists. They want to do the knuckle punch. And I'm like, don't hit me. Now, I know better than that. I know they're not fixing to hit me. I just like to have fun with them. I don't have fear of that. That's not fun. But if I, had, you know, if I was truly afraid of that, that would be false evidence appearing real. Because Jacob wasn't going to hit me the other night. I know he wasn't. But if I'd have been all worked up and grabbed Brother Pesachai by the coattail, your son tried to hit me. What are you trying to... And I got off. That's not how we have a fear of God. How many of y'all ever watched Tom and Jerry? What was that woman's name? Mimi. Oh, Tom! Tom! Here's a rat! Here's a rat! Here's a rat! Look. Just pick up that size 12 with 600 pounds behind it and squash. That thing's gone. But in her imagination, that little mouse is shaking that chair, got it on one leg, moving it around, all kind of stuff. Man, that, that's what fear is. That's false evidence that appears real in, real in someone's mind. You take a herd of elephants running out through a woods. You let it go a little mouse and they will slam on their brakes and stop and go another way because of a rat. There's, you know, that's something wrong with that. Now, I'm not saying you need to go give sugar to the mouse up in the house. I know some of y'all probably the same way. How many of y'all like snakes? Me neither. The only kind of snake that's good is a dead snake. And it, Well, I don't know. I had a pretty good snake the other night. It was cooked into some sausage. Mm. So maybe cooked snake is good snake as well. But that's also dead snake, so that works out fine. But, you know, we can get all wrapped up in fear. I've got a healthy fear of snakes. I respect them. Not a problem, dude. you got all the space you want. Have a great day. I'm not going to pull my little paint legs and go, Get my phone and call Savannah. Savannah, come help me. This is... You know, all these foolish people, I, I don't understand it. Okay, this is just me now. Just me being me. I'm sorry. Y'all know me. I just get messed up every now and then. They call the police department. 911. There's a snake in my yard. Get a shovel. It's dead. I have killed some monster snakes in my life. Big, ugly things. With my bare hands. Guess what? They're not anything to worry about if you have a healthy respect for them. You don't have to be dumb. Man, let me see a 12-foot python. I know how to take care of it. Well, will you kill the poor little thing? That's right. Praise the Lord. That's what God made snakes for, to kill them. <laughs> I really believe that. I've been bit three times by a, by a brown recluse spider. It almost killed me. If I see a brown recluse spider, I know exactly what to do. I don't need to call the pest control. Psst. I'm like Garfield. I squat that thing right, right fast. This is not how we have a fear of the Lord. A fear of the Lord is to be in awe of Him. His wonder, 
His majesty, His glorious nature, His righteousness, His mercy that He has for us, it takes my mind away. It blows my understanding to realize how great He is. You know, this right now, we, are, we, we have Thanksgiving and we thank God for our country. And, and during the you know, 4th of July and stuff, we, we're, we're thankful for the freedoms we have and for the conveniences that this nation gives us. I tell you, I'd rather live here than anywhere else in the world, even though I gripe a lot about where I live. Okay, is that fire enough? But when it comes down to it, I don't want to go anywhere else. When it comes down to it, I'll pick up a gun and defend this old girl. I will. I've been willing to in the past. I swore myself right on in the army many years ago as a young man. Not because I had to. Not because I didn't have other choices. But because I love this nation. I have a healthy respect for the greatness of our nation. Unfortunately, they're trying to make us all afraid of the government, but that we'll get there later in the time, and thankfully we're not quite there yet. We have opportunity of salvation, and I believe if the church would have revival, things would change. Hello? Don't sit back and gripe because we're losing our freedoms. Get on your knees and start changing this world. The change happens from the church. Amen? That's right. That's right. If the church gets on fire, the church, this nation, the whole world will turn the other way. That's the Word of God for you right there. Let's look at this fear of the Lord now. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. So the law is perfect, and what does it do? It converts the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Raise your hand if you're sure. Okay. Making wise the simple the statutes of the lord are right rejoicing the heart only when you seek to have understanding can you get something and realize what psalms 1 and 1 talks about and in thy law does he, uh, let me back up and do the whole thing. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But in the law of the Lord does he meditate day and night. This man is blessed. He meditates day and night. Why? Because within the law of the Lord, he gets a structure that he can walk on. How many of y'all would like it if you didn't know, based on the day of the week, or you didn't have, j j just imagine if we didn't know when winter time was coming. If today, I mean, I know, uh, what do they call that? Uh, is it Indian spring or Indian summer or something like that? It's cold and it's hot. The daytime changes so drastically or something like that. But could you imagine being like in Tahiti and a blizzard comes, three and a half foot of snow. You're like, it's not supposed to be like that here. You wake up in December in Farmington, New Mexico, and it's 94 degrees overcast. I mean, yesterday it was 22, and now look at this. Sun shining 22 now. It's overcast in 85. What's going on with this thing? No, there's a structure, and when you can understand the structure, you can find solace in it because it's solid. It's something you can walk on. I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a fixed thing that you can find comfort in. Now, I know none of our women ever wonder what kind of mood their husband's going to be in when he comes home from work. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome to know already that he's going to come in from work with a smile on his face, he's had a great day at work, he made more money than he expected, and he wants to spend it on you, darling. Wouldn't that be great if every day was that way? It would be. That's the way God is. You know how He works by your actions. His ways are right. His judgments are pure. His things are sure. Everything is already lined out so that you can stand on it and hold fast to it and make a way through it because He is who He is. He said, I am that I am. If He'd have been black, He'd have said, I is that I is. And it simply, simply, simply means that I exist. And I'm so glad that He exists because He is the fundamental 
fundamental of all foundations of physics and laws and understanding. The solar system moves at the precise timing that God designed it because He is a consistent God. He is a faithful God. He is a sure God, a true God, a righteous God, a holy God. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's that kind of God. And when you can understand the laws of that God, you can walk steadfastly in the path of righteousness knowing where you're going and the outcome of it and be a blessed man assured Amen. of God. Sorry, I get all excited this morning. Ooh, Hallelujah. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Watch this. The fear of the Lord is clean. Can I pick on... Who, what wife in here can I pick on this morning? Raise your hand. Okay, you asked for it. I was going to pick on you anyway, but... <laughs> But here's the thing. Your husband comes home, and I, I, I don't know, I, this better not be the way it goes on around here. I don't think y'all would be sitting there cozy holding hands and stuff like that if it was. You know, the, the old joke, it's not real. You know, when you get home from work, just slap your wife one time. If she, you don't know why, she does. That's not the way to live. But if that was the fear of your husband, the reason why you fix the food he likes, and the reason why you wash your clothes or do whatever you do for your husband, is because if I don't do it, he's going to tear me up. He's going to beat me. He's going to put me outside, chain me up in the garage. He's going to tie me, you know, whatever he's going to, you know. That's not healthy fear. But I do this stuff because I have a healthy respect and a reverence for the position that my husband holds in this home. That's a healthy fear. I want to greet my... Now, every day... I, I've never been to your house, but one time we did the Bible study. I'm sure. I'm just guessing here, Brother Peshlakai. She said I could pick on her. Every day you get home, she probably doesn't have that cheery smile and the pep in her step and just a zing. Oh, it's so good to see you're home again. Am I right? You know, sometimes it's like... You have dogs, right? The dogs have, you know, tore the house up and she's frustrated. She just got finished with the laundry and, and, and they drug it out in the yard, got it all dirty again, and, and you happen to walk in at that moment. <laughs> Hello? It doesn't mean she doesn't have a respect for you because she shows it continually. But her fear of her husband is not that he's going to whip me if I don't do it right. That's not a healthy fear. The fear of the Lord is, you get your glasses on, the fear of the Lord is clean. You see, if you're worried, if you're afraid of something because of it going to hurt you and destroy you and beat you, that's not a clean fear. The fear of the Lord is clean. It endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. You see, that's why it's clean, because it's righteous. God says, I'm not going to come... we got two brothers here. Y'all are brothers, right? Okay, that's what I thought. I, just, I hate to embarrass myself like that. <laughs> but we got two brothers. Righteous man, evil man. God says, I'm not going to judge them... I'm not going to judge him based on him or him based on him. What he does is his thing. What he does is his thing. If the righteous man chooses halfway through his life that I'm going to become evil and the evil man chooses halfway through his life I'm going to become righteous, guess what? I'm going to judge you based on where you're at. I'm going to judge you based on your actions. It's righteous. He's not going to judge Brother Levi over here because of you. And ain't you glad? No, I'm good. <laughs> Hello? He's not going to judge you because of your son. Ain't you glad? Or Savannah, because of your mama. Or because of me. Ain't that awesome? Because God is righteous. You see, the fear of the Lord, when you have a respect for the Lord, it's clean, it's pure. It does not contaminate the relationship. And guys, I'll just say this. Let me throw this in. If you go home and you control your wife through fear of, of fists and belts and all that kind of stuff, you've got problems. We need to have a long talk. It's not right. It's not the way God rules the church. It's not the way you should be. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Ladies, you don't need to rule your husbands through fear and intimidation either. I thought I got an amen out of the guys here this morning, but that's okay. 
The fear of the Lord is more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter than a honey. I mean, than honey. Sorry. And the honeycomb. That's the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is that good. Now, Brother Don, that's not how I've been taught about fear. Fear is a bad thing. I fear God. He's standing there with a lightning bolt. And if he ever finds a place to plug that thing in, I know he's going to charge my hide. You know what? That's not the way God works. He'll judge you in righteousness. You're going to, you fear him because with like that attitude because you know you're not right with God. Hello? We have a fear like that because we know that we're not seeking him and we're not in harmony with him. But God is not asking for you to have that kind of attitude toward him self-condemnation. The Bible says there is therefore no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Satan will condemn you and make you feel that that's what God's all about. That God's just waiting to char you and God's just waiting to, to get you. Man, I wait till he gets up in the morning. I got one for him. Flat tire, blam! No, that ain't the way God works. God says, hey, you're wrong. He'll give you conviction not to make you feel bad for where you're at. The conviction is to simply try to show you a better way. Hey, dude, I can't help you. I can't bless you. I can't work with you until you get on my page. But if you get on my page, look what's over here. All up to you. Yes, God is going to judge mankind at the end of time. God is going to put sinners in hell and God's going to let the righteous go to heaven and, the sin and, and it's going to be that way. It's going to drive right down the middle, the right and the wrong. There's no gray areas. We make up all that kind of stuff. God doesn't. Amen. But what is He doing right now? He's saying, hey, whosoever will, come unto me. You may have life. Come and take of the tree of life freely. I, anybody that would take the blood, I died for you. Anybody that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, you shall be filled. God say, that's what God said since Adam and Eve failed in the garden. God has said all along, I'll make a way for you. I have a plan for you. I have a way for you. All you got to do is seek for me and you'll find me. In the day that you hurt, hunger for me, I'm there. You seek for me, I'm not going to hide. I'm right here. But what was it? We're just the, all of us the same way. When we ain't doing right, we're just like Adam. God says, Adam. Adam's like, let me go hide. Hello? Come on. You do the same thing. Other people do the same thing. It's not because God's trying to hurt you. It's not because God, God wasn't trying to hurt Adam. God was giving Adam the space to repent. God to give you a space to repent. Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Everybody say, the beginning of wisdom. We taught on wisdom a couple weeks ago. It starts with the fear of the Lord. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praises endureth forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We're going to run quickly through a few of these. The fear of the Lord is these things. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me the days shall be multiplied. By how can I, I found a who who wants to be forever young? I found a fountain of youth this morning. Hello, Ponce de Leon searched all over Florida looking for the fountain of youth. I found it this morning. It's called the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge is the whole uh, of the holy is understanding. For by me the fear of the Lord, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of their life shall be increased if that ain't the fountain of youth I don't know what is Proverbs 10 27 the fear of the Lord prolongeth days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened the fear of the Lord is strong confidence hello how many y'all like a like somebody has got confidence they walk around you with confidence in their life the fear of the Lord brings confidence in who you are. Because whenever you have a healthy and righteous and pure and clean fear of the Lord, guess what? You have an understanding of who you are. 
Because when you have a fear of the Lord, you don't twist God. When you have a fear of the Lord, you don't try to conform God to your pleasures. You have conformed yourself to Him. And He says, I am going to do something with you. When you're my people, I'm going to be your God. And you can have confidence because the way that you take, I'm going to be right there with you. I'm never going to turn my back on you. I will go before you. I will be behind you. I will be your trumpeter. In other words, I'm going to announce you. I'm going to proclaim you. Jesus Christ will proclaim you when you walk into the darkest days of your life when you walk into it with a fear of the Lord. I could preach all these for about 20 minutes. I'm going to try not to. And his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. I told you I found the fountain of youth. Watch this. Better is little. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great troubles, than great treasure and trouble therewith. In other words, I'd rather be broke and have the fear of the Lord because there is such power in that fear. There's life, there's peace, there's hope, there's joy, there's eternal gain. Everything is good with the fear of the Lord. As I have taught in this church before, whenever we get our eyes off the things and get our eyes on Him, guess what? All the things take care of themselves. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Houses, lands, all the things that you need, your food, your clothes, uh, your goodness, all of your blessings, the treasures that you have in this life. The problem is, is we get wrapped up about having more stuff and more stuff and more things and more this and that. And the wise man Solomon just said, better is little with the fear of the Lord. Why? Because whenever you have the fear of the Lord, you don't have to worry about how much and how good and how all that kind of stuff. It just starts developing. God is my reward. Hello? I got a beautiful girlfriend tied up, locked up in my garage right now. I have a go I sought for that sweetheart since I was a kid. And you know what? When I stopped seeking for that and I just served God, all of a sudden, God was my reward. And what did God do? I got a bonus. You see, better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and the troubles that come with it. Amen? Whenever you're seeking after gain and when you're seeking after the things of this world, that's the way the fear of the Lord works. It brings about God's promises and blessing. Proverbs 15 and 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Proverbs 16 and 6, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Right there should tell you, I need to have a fear of the Lord. I need to have the fear of the Lord working greatly in my life. Just by that one statement. Because I know that I know that you know that I know that God knows that I know that you know that I know that God knows that you know that I know. Amen. That when we depart from evil, we step into righteousness. And when we step into righteousness, God can't help but to bless the righteous. Amen. And if you don't know that by now, you need to experience that. And it begins through the fear of the Lord. Want to have peace in your home? Have the fear of the Lord in your life. Want to have a peace on the job? Have the fear of the Lord in your life. Respect God above all other things and watch God respect you above all other people. Amen. Hello? If God is just what you might choose today and not tomorrow, if God is here now and, and the little thing that comes along in part of your life that just happens on Sunday morning every now and then, and He's not a daily experience, guess what? Every now and then He'll bless you too. There's 50 people on the job. If you've already established your way, I, this is as much as I'm going to do for God. God's going to say, you know what? This guy right here beside you, maybe if I compel him, he might decide to go more. He might. So let me bless him. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to be the most blessed person on my job. Amen. I, I don't know about you. I want to have the... I, I don't know. I mean, 
Sister Savannah, she's starting off in a career and she's going to be a nurse and she's going to wipe people's noses and give them shots and make babies cry and stuff like that. And, 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 but do, do, do you want the average grades of the class? Or do you want the best grades? And when you get out of school, do you want the average job? Or do you want the best job? Hello? The fear of the Lord brings about these things into our life. When I wake up in the morning and say, wait a minute, I don't decide to live for God today because it's Wednesday or, or Tuesday or, or whatever day it is. I live for God because I have a fear of God. I don't want to fail God. I don't want to turn from God. I don't want to depart from God. I want to depart from evil. Proverbs 8, 19, 23, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. And he that hath it shall be abide satisfied. And he shall not be visited with evil. I may say that again. Because I know the kids are coming in and, and they distracted me. Not, I'm joking, they're fine. I'm just... <laughs> Listen to this very carefully. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. You need something to take care of your life? The fear of the Lord tends to your life. Watch this. He that hath it shall abide steadfast. He shall not. Everybody say, he shall not. He shall not. Be visited with evil. You want to know how to walk through terminous and torturous times? The fear of the Lord. I have walked through gainlands and horrible cities and bad places and slept in ungodly houses. Not ungodly as far as that kind of place, but you know what I'm talking about. I have slept in places that was filthy and disgusting. I, I mean, I have been in bad situations with... with I ain't going to tell you. Just trust me. Hello? I came close to some bad, bad stuff in my life. I walked through it without problem. Why? Because I had a fear of God. The fear of the Lord will bring you through and evil will not be visited upon you. Proverbs 22 and 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Wait a minute. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches? Hello? And honor? And life? And I told you it's a fountain of youth. Proverbs 23, 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but thou in the fear of the Lord all, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Now, Brother Don, you've been sitting here telling me what I, how I need to fear God. When you receive the Holy Spirit, this is part of that. When you receive God on the inside. God is one. Everybody say, God is one. In the beginning was God. He was manifested in the flesh. God is a spirit, the Bible says. The spirit of God became flesh and walked among. He didn't become another God, a second God. He's not. You don't pray to Him separately. Oh, God, let thy son run over to the 7-Eleven and get me a Mountain Dew. That sounds silly when you say it like that, but it's exactly, you know, it's, okay, I probably shouldn't do this, but it's anyway. There was, a, there was an old lady years ago, the days of Michelangelo, and it, it, Michelangelo was painting a Sistine Chapel. And, and, and he was painting... Up here, and he's, he's, he's and, and this poor little widow woman come in, and she's praying. She goes, "Oh God, oh God." Michelangelo had a sense of humor, and he's way up on a scaffold, and he looks down, and she's going, "Oh God." He said, "Yes." <laughs> oh God. Yes. And she looks up and sees the right hand side of that ceiling and go, I'm not talking to you. I want to talk to your daddy, boy. <laughs> That's just kind of, the Holy Spirit is not a third party. 
in the Godhead. He is God. He is God. You don't need to pray to the Holy Ghost separately from, well, let me pray to God. Unless you want to do a Trinitarian offering. We can do one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. And while you're at it, throw in one for the burning bush too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? You don't have to pray separately. You just, God, you're God. Amen. And, 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 and you just, when you call on God, it's a, you know what? There ain't nobody picking up the phone on your private calls with God. Lord, guess what? That immediately shuts out everything. I'm talking to Jesus. That shuts out the devil. It shuts out the mother-in-law. It shuts out the father-in-law. It shuts out... The dog can't even understand what you're talking about. Amen. And you just start... And you start telling... Uh, you don't have to worry... Well, you know, there's people tell you, well, you know, God is a mean God and Jesus is a fancy little soft little cottontail bunny rabbit and you can talk to Him and He'll go talk to the Father for you because He understands... No. Oh, come on. Hello. The fear of the Lord comes with the receiving of His power. When you get God, because the fear of the Lord is part of God, it's one-seventh of what makes Him up. He is a spirit, and one-seventh of His spirit is the fear of the Lord. God Himself holds fear of the Lord as one-seventh of His entire substance. So why is He the Almighty? Because he has fear. Why is he? All the gold is his and all the silver is his and the heavens is his throne and the earth is his footstool and he owns the cat on a thousand hills and he owns the hills too because the fear of the Lord is riches. Why is God the eternal one, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last? Because fear is longevity. I need you to understand that there is the fear of the Lord built into God. Yes. You're going to really get excited in a minute. Yes. I know you're trying to stay up with me. Make sure your shoes are tight so when you start running the aisles in a minute. The spirit of the Lord is in, the spirit of the fear of the Lord is in God. Watch this, Proverbs 1.28. And they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Come on. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding... In the fear of the Lord. Talking about Jesus. Okay. Shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge. Y'all should be getting excited right now. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness. Shall he judge the poor and repu reprove with equity for the meek of the earth? And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and the righteous shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. What's that mean? Sister Savannah done come told a story on Brother Pesachai and made him look all bad. God's not judging by the look of his eyes. He's not judging by what he hears in his ear. He's judging by what's righteous. And if it's right, it's right. If it's a wickedness, it's wickedness. If it's evil, it's evil. But if it's glorious, it's glorious. If it's true, it's true. And he judges truth. Hey man, do you realize that when God blesses you, he's judging you? God, judge me. Forgive me first. Yes. Hello? We, some of us need forgiveness. I, I, I put myself in that, okay? Can I pat myself on the head on that one. Hello? <laughs> Get everything right with God. Judge me, Lord. 
Because I have done good unto my neighbor. I have fed the hungry. I have loved the brokenhearted. I have been there for the fatherless. I have been there. I've walked your roads. I have witnessed to those that are lost. I have done what's right. Lord, judge me. And God's going to say, hey, that's righteousness. It's not because I heard it. You know why I'm glad that God doesn't judge by what he hears? It's because the devil's a liar and the father of it. And the Bible says he goes and he is continually derogatory to the brethren every day. Come on. Well, I heard what she did. And you know, hey, man, God, that's, uh-uh. The devil is a liar. And the Father, I don't care if that somebody's got video. If you ask God to forgive you, the devil can show that video to God all he, all he wants. Because righteousness is righteousness. Truth is truth. A man that repents and turns from his wicked ways, his old man is always forgotten. It's never brought back up again. Jesus Christ is not condemning them. He is forgiving them. That is his desire. He's trying to restore people through the righteous passage of forgiveness and repentance. That's how God works. Why? Because he has fear of who he is. Boy, it's getting good. It's getting good. Evil responds in a bad way. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He arises to shake terribly the earth. In that day man shall cast his idols of silver and of gold which they made each one for himself to worship in the moles, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty when He arises to shake terribly the nations. Revelation tells us that men will be seeking death and they can't find it. They will cry under the rocks, fall upon us. Why? Because the glory of the Lord comes. You see, that's the wrong kind of fear. God's not looking for you to serve Him on that kind of attitude but the evil will always shake and the evil will always always be afraid in an unhealthy fear of God when they had the opportunity to have a clean fear of God. Lord, I love you. I know you're greater than I am. I know your kingdom is great. I serve you, Lord. Whatever you would have me to do, wherever you want me to go. All God's looking for is some worshipers. A true worshiper. His heart and His core is all about the fear of the Lord. God's still looking for worshipers. Four is Hebrews chapter six. Let me let me just go with Titus one and two. You can look at Hebrews six and thirteen another time. It says almost the same thing. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie. Everybody say God, God. cannot God. lie. Say it again. God cannot lie. Why can't God lie? Because God is right. That's right. I like that. It's a good answer. Because God has the fear of the Lord instilled within him. The fear of the Lord worketh wisdom and knowledge and understanding and might and everything else. The fear of the Lord is the power in which He operates. It is what you can walk on whenever you have a fear of the Lord and you recognize that God has the same fear within Him. It gives you the power to look at the Word of God and to read a promise in the Word of God and say every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I'm going to stand on His promises. I know He is not slack concerning His promises, but His promises are yea and amen. He is sure. He is sound fast. He will never turn His back. He will never lie to me. He will never cheat on me. He will never deny me because He has the fear of His own power within Him. What do you think? I need to work on that a little bit more. Let me see here if I can help you out. 
Let me see if I can work on this a little bit. Brother Peshakai, your wife let me pick on her. Can I pick on you? Yeah. Okay, here we go. We're going to pick on Brother Peshakai. This is Pick on Peshakai Day. P.O.P. <laughs> Brother Peshakai, you're the husband and the man of this home. If you don't have a fear of who you are, you'll fail. Do you want to be a failure? You see, if he doesn't have a fear of himself and his position as husband in this home, he'll cheat on his wife. If he doesn't have a fear of his position as the provider of the family, he'll go blow all of his money at the track. If he doesn't have a fear of his position, he does not hold his position in regard. And guess what happens? They don't either. God is just like that. We are made in His image. God is exactly that way. When we have a fear of the position that God has given us, God has a position that He has. He is creator of all things. Everything that was made serves Him. And one iota of God that were to fail, it all Stop serving him. What good is that man who has failed his family and done wrong and, and, and not gone back? And if you've ever messed up with your family, don't misunderstand me. There is forgiveness. I'm talking about an active situation. If you have failed and you have, you have lost your family and you have lost your home and you have lost the respect of your wife and you have lost the respect of your children because you didn't have a fear of your position, how broken your heart would be and how what good would you be and you would no longer have that position. I'm going to tell you what, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the fear of the Lord is deep within God that He says, wait a minute, I made a promise unto Abraham and I said unto his children and his seed for generation after generation, I will give the land from the Euphrates River unto the Nile. I will bless them and anybody that blesses them, I'll bless them. Anybody that curses them, I'll curse them. God says, because I'm God, I'm going to stand on it. Because I'm God. I have a fear of my position. I'm not just anybody running my mouth. I'm God Almighty. I'm the one that made the palm trees. I'm the one that put the sun where it's at. I'm the one that makes the moon where it's at. I'm the one that puts the snow on the Alps and the bright sunny days in the tropics. I'm God alone and I'm going to stand behind what I have developed. And church family, I'm telling you that God has determined unto you in the sixth chapter of the book of Hebrews, He has founded this church on greater promises than Abraham. Amen. You'll never wake up one day and sin and come running to the cross and him say, hey, this blood isn't for you. It's not good enough for you. Oh no, he's got a fear of who he is because the Bible says, for God so loved the whole world that he gave, not the whole world, so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He shed blood for you. He shed blood for you. He shed blood for you. And if you wake up one morning and think he didn't shed blood for you and you could prove it, guess what? Your salvation lost. That's not much love. Jesus has blood for you and 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 me and every last one of us. And can I tell you something? It's never lost its power. If he says, if you'll walk in the fear of God, evil shall not approach you. I'm going to talk to you right now today. Walk in the fear of God and watch evil stay far away. If he said, treasure comes with the fear of God, walk in the fear of God and treasure will come. Why? Because God has a fear of his own promises. He said, I don't want them to come undone. I don't want a church to call on me and me not hear their prayer. He says, if you call on me, I will hear you. If you ask, you shall receive. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, it shall be open. Why? Because I'm God. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil is the liar. Some of you are sitting here right now and don't believe that God's promises are sure and amen. I'm going to tell you something. God's promises are sure and amen. You will not go wrong. You will not be defeated. You will not be overcome. God's not going to destroy you. He will only judge righteousness for righteousness and evil for evil. Why? Because he is afraid of his own power. He is afraid of becoming undone. He is sitting on a throne and he doesn't want someone else to take that throne. Why? Because he created it. He started 
in the beginning. Just like every man and woman in here, our, our moms in here, you want to be a great mom. You want your girls to look up at you. You want your boys to listen to you. Can I tell you how it is? You stand fast and be a mom and don't let them see you be some other thing out there and you show them that you're their mom. Don't ever become weakened and don't ever become down on their level. It's not that you can't get down and play with kids, but you always have to be mom. And when you're mom, I don't care if your kids are 60 and you're 90, they're still going to respect you as mom. If you'll love them as mom. But let me tell you something. When you start acting like a child, I'm not just picking on women here. Men, the same thing. How many of you men or women have worked on jobs and you see your boss cut up and, and do things that ain't to the, to, the, to the manual and all that kind of stuff? Next thing you know, who's going to lead you? Hello? Hello? Well. You can't follow somebody that don't stand for anything. God says, I have a fear. One-seventh of my entire being is about a fear of my being that I don't want to let you down. When he died on the cross, he shed blood. That man was 33 and a half years old and he walked this earth. Let me tell you something. He walked this earth, Brother Cody, and he never sinned once. Oh, well, what would a little something have mattered? You know, what would it have mattered if he'd have just told a little white lie? Because that blood had to be pure. Otherwise, he'd let you down. Forget everybody else in this room. If he'd have failed once, he would have let you down. And he didn't want to let you down. He had the fear of his own power and he constrained himself in righteousness so that he could look at you and say, Sister Penny, my promises are yea and amen. My promises are sure. If I ever said if it's in that book, I'm going to stand by it. I'm going to hold fast to it. Every promise is true. I'm not going to be a liar. And he won't lie. Brother Robert, whatever he promised you, it's going to come to pass. Did he ever make a promise to you, daughter? Did God ever speak to you and give you a promise? Sister V Hill, did God ever give you a promise? Sister Red House, did God give you a promise? Do you have a promise from God about anything? Has God said He'd do something in your life, Sister Savannah? Has God showed up and, and give you a confirmation? I'm going to tell you something. His checks won't bounce. Why? Because He has the fear of God in Him. If you could ever get a grasp that, wait a minute, He said it. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to pray 10,000 prayers over it. I don't have to dream crazy dreams. I just know it. I just know it. I just know it. Why? Because He has a fear. I walk in the fear of God. He says, if you keep my command, I'm going to do these things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell somebody today that the fear of God needs to start working on our life. I challenge you to do something. I feel to challenge this church to do something. Go get you a notebook. Go get you a notebook. You ought to start today. You can get cheap ones. They don't have to be expensive. They don't have to be fancy. If you want to buy a nice one, that's good. Get you a nice one. Put something into it. Because you're going to be putting good stuff in this book. Yes. You want to buy a cheap one? That's fine. Don't write it on your hand because you can wash your hand. I hope. Please. <laughs> starting, you ought to do it starting today. Nothing else gets written in this book. This is your Walk of God book. For one year. I challenge you. Every time you come to church, you write the date down. You write down the message title. Every time you come to first Monday prayer tomorrow night between 6 o'clock and 9, 9 o'clock. How do you like I slid that in there? Every time you come to prayer meeting. Every time you give in the offering. Every time you obey God and pay your tithes. Every time you do these things, you write it down. You write it down all year long. And on what's on the left hand side. On the right hand side, write down as you go through the life. What's going on in your day as it attains to your happiness, your health, your well-being, your existence? How's things going? I'm going to tell you what. God will show you that if you'll walk in fear, He'll bless your life. He will back up His promises. Go read Deuteronomy 28. If you will observe and keep these commandments which I give you this day, you shall be wanted of all men. You shall be the blessed. The love of all nations shall come upon you. You'll expand your borders. He'll expand your house. He'll bless your storehouse. He'll bless your kitchen. He'll bless your crops. He'll bless your dogs, your cats, your kangaroos, your orangutans. He'll put more eggs in your chicken coop. He'll do whatever you might need Him to do because He said if you'll do it. Why? Because I walk in the fear of God. I honor God with my life. And God says I'm going to honor you with my power. 
And if you'll go starting today, you'll find this out. Full-time fear, full-time faithfulness, full-time coming to church, being a faithful part of the church in every way gets God showing up in everything. There was 15 people lined up for that promotion. Guess who got it? The child of God. Why? Because God says, I'm going to bless everything you do. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. I will make all of the love of the world to come upon you. Why is it that everybody wants to be with you and everybody wants to be like you? Why? Because I don't want to be like them. I want to be like Jesus. Hello? Let me tell you something. When I want to be like, the more I want to be like Him, the better off I'm. The better off I am in everything. I tell you, when I don't want to be like Him, that's when all of a sudden I start suffering. My God has everything. My God owns it all. You, you missed that. My God, Sister Graham owns everything. I want to be just like Him. I want to own it all. Hello. He is mighty. I want to be mighty. Be like Him. Hello? He lo he's loving. I want to be a loving person. Be like Him. There is no faults or failures within Him. How many of y'all would like to have no failures? Be like Him. Be like Him. Wait a minute. What do I have to do to be like Him? Ah, good question. That's my job. Lord told me last night it's my job to prepare the bride... You're the bride. Hello? You're joint heirs with Christ. You are one of God. You're, 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 you're one in the same. There is no, just like you can't separate God, the Father, from the God, the Son, from God, the Holy Ghost, and the burning bush, and the, all that. Guess what? God is God. Yes, amen. Whenever you become one with Him, yes, God's not going to tear you apart. <laughs> Nobody's going to pluck you out of His hand. He says, in my hand are riches forevermore, as blessings, as all these good things. The, the tree of life comes through the fear of the Lord. Can you get the fear of the Lord? Live for God. God, whatever you ask, whatever you ask, whatever you ask, God, whatever you ask. And let me tell you something. God doesn't have a long list of things that He asks. He just simply wants you to be like Him. He wants you to walk holy. Give your life to Him. Reject evil. And you know what? The fear of the Lord, that takes care of the evil. Hello? The fear of the Lord brings in joy. You don't have to go seeking joy at sinful things and lustful ideas. Your joy comes from the Lord. Well, what's wrong with you weirdos? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not a weirdo. You are. Look at the trash you're putting your life into. I just can't enjoy a football game with a half, without a half a case of beer and a DWI on the way home. You know what? I have the fear of the Lord. I can watch and enjoy a football game and I don't cost me one dime. I don't know why I never really have enjoyed a football game, but that's okay. I enjoy the scores because I like to give Brother Larry a hard time about the Cowboys. I like to give Brother Farrell a hard time about uh, Chargers? Huh? Raiders. Okay, I knew it was somewhere out there. I like to give everybody a hard time about the Broncos. I love giving Brother Martinez a hard time about the Steelers, but I really could care less. Hello? But I have a fear of the Lord. I can enjoy all things. I, I don't have, you know what? I can enjoy people without finding myself caught up in lust and garbage in my mind. I don't have to have all that junk. I can enjoy life. I can walk through life and enjoy life and enjoy the beauty of God gave us. Because why? I'm His Son. Yes, amen. Come on. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, Heaven is His throne and the earth is His footstool. I'm not an outsider. I'm an insider. Yes, amen. Hello? You're outsiders. The people that don't serve the Lord are the outsiders. I walk in the blessings of God. And God is not going to back off on that. God says, I'm going to bless those that bless you. I'm going to curse those that curse you. And by these immutable things, it's impossible for God to lie. For as He swore unto Abraham, He could swear by none greater. So He swore by Himself. Why? Because He knew that was the one thing He would never let down. He would never let down you. Hey, everything else may turn aside, but God's never going to stop. The day God stops is the day the sun will come up at will. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I don't want the sun popping up over the mountain. I'd just be plumb silly. But when he structured it in order, when he set things set fast, you can walk in peace. Why? Because you're not 
torn here and there, you walk in with God. I'm going to tell you something, church family. If you didn't write down those scriptures in Proverbs, that section about the things that, that the fear of the Lord is, you ought to get the CD and you ought to slow it down. Write them down. I, I, could, have, I could have brought more scripture and a whole lot more stuff. But if you could just get to the point where you understand that because He said it and I love Him, that's all that matters. Because He promised it, I don't have to stand with my leg up and hold it. I don't have to do none of that. He said, this is it. And I can just do it. It's easy. Hello? It's just easy. I don't have to pick up the things of the world because I have the fear of God. Amen. You realize that it's so hard for us to lay down the things that the world has invented to be persuasive against us. Oh, Brother Don, you don't understand. I got to go to the car show. Insert whatever your problem is where car show was. You don't have to go. There's nothing wrong with going to the car show. Don't misunderstand me, please. Everybody, all, all you did was plan on going to the car show. Keep going to the car show. That's okay. Brother Graham goes hunting. What I tell you, Brother Graham, when you go hunting? Have a good time. We'll see you when you get back. He misses, what, two Sundays a year, three going hunting. And one or two going on vacation. If you had a wife like his, you'd want to go on vacation too. But wait, no, you take her with you, don't you? No. <laughs> Sorry. Please forgive me, Sister Graham. <laughs> Will you forgive me? You still love me? <laughs> but, hey, that's the way God is. You know, but you know what? There's things that we do pick up, though, that are so hard to lay down. So hard to lay down. So hard to lay down my drinking and my carousing and my running with wild women and my, 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 my shooting my neighbor's dog and keying everybody and stealing cars. It's so hard to lay this stuff down because it's just so, it makes me feel alive. No, the Bible says wickedness bringeth a swift death. Hello? But the fear of the Lord giveth life. It tendeth to your life and all the things of your life. The fear of the Lord bringeth all the things that you have need of. The clothing, the raiment, the food, the, all the shelter, everything cometh through the fear of the Lord. I challenge you today. Go get your notebook. Don't forget to write it down. Write down everything you do for God this year. Not to sit there and say, God, look what I did for you. You don't have to worry about it. It's just going to prove to you. You won't even notice it. You won't even notice it. It's not to sit there and notice it as it goes along. Because that, that's a fool's errand right there. A watch pour, pot, what, never boils. Sit there, hurry, hurry, hurry. I found the fastest way to cook grits. Do something else. <laughs> Have you ever noticed your food never burns when you're watching it? Turn around, two seconds to put the turkey on the table, you burnt the rolls. <laughs> I don't know why the oven kicks into gear when you do that. The same with living for God. Be faithful to God. God, you know, up until the 30th of November, I did that Sunday morning thing. I, wasn't, I never came to prayer meeting. I never came to Bible study. I never came to, to Wednesday night church, Sunday night church. I never came to Friday night healing service. I never came to prayer meetings. I just came, but I, I, the preacher motivated me. And it's been 12 months, and I have just done everything. I've listened to the pastor. I've walked in what he's taught me. I've done the best I can. I missed a couple here and there, but not because I was trying to, you know, not because I was just being unfaithful. It's just life went on. And then look at where you're at right now versus where you're at then. I promise you, I promise you, when you walk in the fear of the Lord, when you, now, if you're walking in it to get the good stuff, guess what? You've missed it already. Hello? I just want to serve God. The Bible has given me promises. You can serve God to receive. How, how many of y'all would like, let's just say, uh, 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 Sister, Sister Redhouse opens up a business. And she's got, what kind of business are you going to open? She's going to open, she's going to sell flowers. She opens a flower shop. How many of y'all like to see her flower shop do well? Amen. And she uh, gives you an opportunity to invest in her flower shop. Be pretty good, wouldn't it? And you, and you want her to do well, right? But don't you want some money back from it? She's promising you an 18% return in 24 months. Hey, sign me up. Right? You want her to be successful. That was your first step. Got the opportunity to invest in it. That's the second step. The third step was automatic. She made the promise, 18% return. 
That's the way God is. When I want to see the kingdom of God grow, guess what? I just want to see the kingdom of God grow. God says, put yourself in faithfulness, and I got some return for you. You don't have to worry about the return. He is faithful and just. He's going to keep his promises. They are yea and amen. They are sure. They are upon a solid foundation. That is where he cannot lie. And you didn't go in there saying, hey, God, I'll tell you what. If you'll give me, let's see. If you'll give me two heads of cabbage and six zucchini, I'll serve you. You ain't going to get nothing. You ain't even going to get squash. But if you'll say, God, I'll serve you no matter what, God say, you know what? I've been looking at that old boy. He needs a side of beef along with some cabbage and zucchini. And you know what? He needs an oven to cook it on because that zucchini's nasty raw. Hello? And there it is. There it is. Challenge you. Get you a book today. Hello? Don't go find something and everything else is in. Don't go get a recipe book and start writing in there. Get you a fresh one. You got a fresh one at the house? Fine. Use it. Don't write anything else in there. This is your God. Walk with God. 2014. From November, the, uh, from December the 1st right on through November next year. And we're going to have a worship service next Thanksgiving like you won't believe because God's going to change your life. God, there are, I, I just feel by faith, I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it clear. There are some of you in here that have been dealing with physical infirmities for far too long hey, because you don't believe that Jesus Christ will heal you. I'm telling you today, there's going to be some of y'all walk in this place one year from now, disease-free, clean and whole and healthy because you've got an understanding of the fear of the Lord. Amen. Brother Dunn, that's a mighty bold statement. I got a mighty big God. It says, by His stripes we are healed and He cannot lie. Let's stand to our feet. Lord, instill within our hearts the fear of God. Instill within our minds a fear of Your greatness, Lord. For the same fear that You have, Lord, I need. I need to be like You, Jesus. I need to be full of the fear of the Lord, that I may walk in truth, that I may walk steadfast, that I may be sure, that I may keep Your commandments and walk in the promises of God. For Lord, You have promised unto me and made commandments to blessing upon my life. You have made commandments to peace on my life. You have made commandments, Lord, and I want to walk in those commandments. Whatever it takes, God, I want to receive all of You, God. Stir me with Your Spirit, Lord. For Lord Jesus, through the fear of the Lord cometh knowledge and wisdom and understanding and the might of the Lord and the counsel of God. Bring your counsel to pass, Lord. I ask you to let these lessons, these seven weeks, to sink deep into our heart that we might understand more about the greatness of our God than ever before. Not just for the blessing, but yes, that we will be blessed. But by walking in the fear of God, the pleasures of all of the things of the world will come unto us in holiness and truth and peace and righteousness. For Lord, we are truly a light set upon a hill. And we need to be shown. For there is lost souls in the city. Every family in this house today has somebody in their immediate family that's lost without you. And God, we've got to see them saved. Lord, help us to walk as a holy example. That this world may see who you are through our fear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and praise the Lord a little bit.